We will not be silent. We will not obey. We will not allow our government to destroy our humanity. We are the final American revolution. See you next Independence Day. And that clip was on the morning of July 4th, 2013 in downtown D.C., just a few blocks from the Capitol, where Adam Kokesh went ahead with his one-man march on D.C. Uh, to defile their unconstitutional gun ban that was overturned almost five years ago in D.C. versus Heller. And I had a chance to talk to Adam yesterday live on the radio for about 20 minutes about why he went and did that and the fact that his idea to have a march uh, against the globalist occupation of the U.S., or in his words, an, an end of the federal government, uh, was that successful across the country? I would say, uh, yes, it was. So he's calling, I guess, for another move uh, towards informing the public to do this uh, coming up in 2014. And then Adam also brought up the point that, hey, Alex, you know, uh, don't speak for us here and say that we just want to re-upload the old republic and still have a federal government. We want to devolve back to the states or evolve uh, towards uh, more uh, regional governments. Look, my whole issue here is I'm not telling people what we should do. I'm not saying uh, specifically that everybody should follow my ideas. I'm just pointing out our federal government has been conquered by a bunch of foreign offshore banks that are establishing classical tyranny in this nation. Sure, last year it made national headlines. I called for the second American revolution against the globalist to have the states withdraw out of the fraudulent federal government and then make a decision on what we constitutionally wanted to do or what the people uh, wanted to do. So in a way, what I'm calling for historically uh, from a research perspective is pretty similar to what uh, Adam's calling for. So I want to let him today really flesh out what he's calling for. I'm just trying to get a debate going about all of this, and that's why we have him on. That's why we've tried to give him a forum here with our audience uh, to discuss it. And, and it is a, a complex issue. Uh, this is not you know, simple stuff like Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman distraction in the media, or the latest kidnapping. Uh, this is a real geopolitical situation we're talking about uh, because the United States, like it or not, is connected to this artificial globalism that's been created. And the globalist might also, this is one of my questions for Adam, use uh, the breakdown of the uh, occupation federal government as a pretext to come in and try to take over the states. So we'll get Adam Kokesh's take on all of that. Adam, thanks for joining us. You heard my diatribe there uh, present to us your case, exactly what you're saying specifically, and what type of system uh, you're putting forward or the type of debate that you're trying to foster. Sure, Alex. Thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate the, the chance for this more relaxed conversation and talking about these, these deeper issues. And, and as you put it, uh, the geopolitical issues that do come into play when we talk about the revolution that is impending in America. And I just want to reiterate, first of all, what we're saying, and I think you would join me in this, is that we can do things the easy way or the hard way. And the hard way is to keep our heads buried in the sand and wait for the inevitable collapse points and the tumultuous decline of America that may have some violence and, and pull the rug out from underneath a lot of people in a very dangerous way. The easy way is let's pay attention, let's take drastic action that's appropriate to the situation, and let's really take advantage of this opportunity to move move humanity forward. We are calling for the abolition of the United States federal government. And what we replace that with is state governments. And it's not that it's to replace everything that the federal government is doing. We're not suggesting that there be 50 NSAs and, and, and so on, but that we have a, a return to that at least local kind of sense of, of self-government that we once had in this country and to move humanity forward. Because in the ultimate progress, what we're looking for is an evolution towards self-governance. And, and I believe that that is the inevitable course of human history, and that is our destiny as a species to achieve self-governance, to achieve a state in which every human being decides that they want to be the alpha of their own lives. And so when we talk about the ultimate goal 
of uh, abolishing all government. It's to replace it with self-rule and a voluntary, peaceful society. So I understand the considerations for thinking that maybe there are advantages to being a part of a larger government or a bigger collective, but really the way we make progress is by moving power locally and moving it down in the direction of the individual. And so that's what this is, this is about for me. I wouldn't want to cut out 97% of a cancer and say, well, let's just get back to constitutional government because it's going to grow back and democracy itself is what we're talking about getting past here this idea that human beings should pick leaders for each other and that a majority by virtue of just being the majority can come up with an excuse through that and through a government to impose its will on the minority or everybody else as you know leads to the kind of corruption we see today and I would say that that's inherent in the system because politicians will inevitably promise something other than what they're going to deliver, which is the special interests that they plan to serve. And that's what it ends up happening every single time. And until people say, well, we're not going to give this power arbitrarily to any kind of leadership, we're not going to demand our, our own self-governance, we're going to have all of these problems. But right now, we see this particular level of government at the United States federal level coming to some dangerous points of collapse. And I think we can really move people to get behind this simple call. And that's why we're working towards this for next year. What we did this past Independence Day was fundamentally change the conversation by starting people to talk about this. But we're building forces for next year. And one of the most important things people have to get over, Alex, and I, and I think this is an important one for a lot of people that come to this movement through love of country, through love of their fellow human beings, that it's not about patriotism. It's not about love for a collective or love that ends at borders. It's about love for humanity itself, love for liberty and love for oneself and the pride of an individual saying, I don't need to be part of a collective to have a healthy sense of myself. Adam, looking at this, I, I understand the idea to get towards local government and then individual government. I understand that anything centralized ends up becoming corrupt and bad historically. I'm just trying to get the public to awaken to the globalist, and the quickest path to that is to point out our country has been occupied uh, basically by these foreign forces that are completely uh, above any law and who are the ultimate socialist feeding uh, off of corporate welfare. And so I understand your whole point of the federal government is completely shot, completely corrupt, completely uh, you know, full of corruption, and so let's just get rid of the whole thing. My only point is, is that the world is so... Uh, conditioned and the US is so debilitated and we live in such an artificial construct uh, where our very culture has been rewritten into these systems uh, of collectivism uh, that it's like asking Helen Keller to go out on her first day of being able to make contact with humanity and climb Mount Everest and, and I understand that the bold stroke sometimes works but a lot of times it also misses and so there's, there's all these specifics of how something would be done. I see a plan in the Declaration of Independence Bill of Rights Constitution uh, to, to, to absolutely knock out almost all of what the globalists have done, and people respect that and understand that and know that. I just don't see us transported uh, to this uh, ultra-libertarian or anarchic capitalist system you're talking about overnight. I mean, what would be the process or uh, what do you expect to happen uh, if there was some type of, you know, uh, Arab Spring here and then three years from now the country is an absolute wreck with all these different power forces fighting with each other in the streets. I mean, in every case in history, this will end in a giant physical war. Well, I think that's one of the great opportunities that we have in the American political system with this concept of sovereign states coming together to form the United States. We can simply get rid of this extraneous upper level of government entirely and still have the basic fundamental concept for how society is organized in government without that higher level of corruption. But power corrupts and any power that exists has that potential. Anytime people say, well, we're going to abdicate our power of self-governance, we're going to vote for elected representatives, then you you have this opportunity for corruption.
And you're absolutely right that if we have it at the state level, yes, there will be corrupt st state governments. But if we nationalize that corruption, you only create a greater distance from the people and greater centers of power that allow for more corruption. But to answer your bigger question, government is always a product of the paradigm. That is, whatever people believe is what determines what form of government they will have to put up with. And you can look at this through the course of human history. We've actually gone from, you know, law of the jungle, where whoever could pick up the biggest rock was in charge. And, and maybe that was the best thing at the time. And if you, were the, the, if you weren't the alpha male of your pack, it was in your best interest for survival to say, well, he's threatening me. I'm just going to go along. He can bring in the biggest game. You know, I'm, I'm going to survive. That's what I'm going to do. But we've evolved in, in many ways past that. I think people are seeing that. So it's this paradigm shift towards self-government. And I think you've done a lot to, to really awaken people to the reality of, of what they are suffering from as a result of, of the combination of that and the modern technology that's available to, to modern governments. But what people really need to be woken up to now is the philosophy behind this and what they need to demand for themselves and how they should live as free and sovereign individuals. And if you endorse the ideas that got us to this point, that a, a democracy or, or even a constitutional republic, you know, is, is, is a, an okay way to create a center of power. And you know what? I love the American founding, historically. I think it is an incredible step forward in terms of human progress. But the next step is not from, you know, uh, this current, whatever you want to call it, back to that. It's to a new form. And in order to be a true revolution, it really has to be something that is genuinely new. And in this case, it's this, this idea of, of self-governance. And, and I, I think that's the paradigm shift that's coming right now. And as, as much as you can say that the Constitution would be great compared to what we have today, or if our government actually followed it, it's still prone to the same fallacies that got us to this point that we're suffering from now. And this idea, again, under the Constitution, that we should be picking leaders for each other sure. is the window for corruption. Sure. Let me just briefly address that. Um, a, a, a pure democracy is where 51%, for those that don't know out there that are new viewers, call to kill the other 49. It's done because the majority voted. We're a republic with a Bill of Rights and Constitution. And then within that framework uh, that is the greatest system ever developed so far, we're in trouble because we've allowed it to be abridged, undermined, uh, and destroyed because it's only a document that a very moral, active, informed people uh, can basically animate, uh, to paraphrase Thomas Jefferson and other founders. So, so I'm not calling for two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. We know that we have an absolutely criminal foreign banking cartel that has taken over the federal government, expanded it unconstitutionally, and is now using it as an occupation force, and bragging they've done that, and they've done that in Europe. They admit, we've taken over, you will pay all, our, all of our derivatives debts, we're going to break up your families, we're going to build giant prisons, uh, we're going to enslave you, ah ha ha. I mean, I mean, this is flaming tyrants. But then you get the Peter Thiels and people that say they're uh, libertarians, coming in and going, yeah, we'll have free cities out in the ocean and free subsidies within the U.S. And Glenn Beck says, you know, they'll build a community that will have enough power to lobby like the big mega banks do to be outside the taxes and outside the system. So it's these city states again going back basically to feudalism. But then if you expand out from that, how do you deal with the globalists that already came through the corrupt government and had the government take the, 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 the taxpayer paid for infrastructure of power plants, waterways, uh, the uh, reservoirs, the institutions, the infrastructure, it's already being transferred to the globalists who aren't free market, they call it libertarian, it's theft, it's fraudulent deals, and so we get rid of the federal government and now it's a bunch of private security forces running around that already took the country over. I say we take the federal government back, arrest all these criminal globalists. I mean, what structure do we use of grand juries to bring them to justice and, and literally have our Nuremberg trials? That's what we have to have and then have a new constitutional convention, decide do we abolish the federal government entirely or what do we do? You say, well, that's pe groups of people voting on what happens. The average person out there Adam has a 20-point IQ reduction from the fluoride on record as literally a foaming-at-the-mouth zombie who can't even wipe their own ass. So I'm asking you, these people don't even know how to feed themselves. 
Well, I mean, it's much more sophisticated than the system that you're even talking about. I mean, we've That's already... That's a great question. We, mm -hmm. Ab absolutely. It's a very important question, and I appreciate the way that you pose that, Alex. But I, I would beg to differ just a little bit on, on the understanding of the Constitution, uh, you know, in contrast to a direct democracy, because it's still fundamentally in the same category. If you have a direct democracy, as you say, 51% vote to kill 49%, you still need an enforcement class to carry that out. You need the support system to make that possible. You need the general consent of the public to carry that out. And what we see, uh, even under the Republic, as we have today, Day, if you, if you, obviously it's not a republic, but under this system it has devolved once you grant those powers of democratic representation that it eventually comes out to how do we allow criminals to get away with as much as society will tolerate? How do we take away the way that society actually corrects for those injustices? And that's the result of the Constitution. That's the result of endorsing these policies. Now, as for the average American, you're absolutely right. And that's why what we're calling for is to elevate the average American. And I, th I think the work that you've done in educating people about fluoride has been absolutely essential in that. And, and I think the, the way that people are waking up to self-governance is key in this. But in terms of the how, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm really not too concerned about the exact, exact mechanics. And I'm really not too concerned about redistributing the wealth. And I think one of the things that we have to acknowledge if we want real freedom is that we're going to have to give up some materialism. We're not going to ever have perfect justice. We're not never going to have a perfect redistribution of wealth based on, well, that was you know granted by government unjustly to some private interest or to some corporation or whatever the case may be. But that's also one of the advantages of what I'm proposing is that property can be reclaimed by states and local governments in the process of decentralization. I think really this idea of localizing power is the, the best mechanism of doing it. Obviously, one of the things we have to do is get people off fiat currencies. Getting rid of the federal government means getting rid of the dollar as the world reserve currency, getting rid of the dollar entirely. And I think that's a key step in the right direction. But when it comes to the imbalance of power and the imbalance of wealth that exists, some of it is just going to have to be, you know, we're just going to have to chalk it up as a loss. And I think if we want to move forward, we're going to have to give up some of that petty desire for perfect justice. However, there is a good mechanism that gets a, uh, to a point where people are at least allowed equitable access to natural resources. And one of the ways that you could do that when you get rid of the federal government and have the states reclaim all the federally held property within their borders when they secede is they can then re relocalize it again to the county level. And at some point, you simply issue shares in corporations that are, are holding all of that property and you allow people to sell them or trade them. And that's how you get to that privatization. And it's not going to be perfect, Alex. And this is a very screwed up world we live in as you, as you do a great job of educating people about, but we have to accept some of the, the, the past mistakes in order to move past them without dwelling on this. Because if, No, if, no, if, I understand, if, but, but, but the way the complexity of the world works, the way, the way the complexity of the world works is that the organized gangs, the big corporate gangs that set up the New World Order, the ones that have occupied the government, yes. what's going to happen to them? Because you're going to get rid of the federal government. They've already bought everything up and taken everything over through the federal government unduly. So now we just get a global government? Because let me tell you what the banksters are doing. They're actually getting rid of government in Europe because they already use it to take everything over, and now they're the government. So, well, I, so I trade out the sure. feds? I trade out the feds no. for Goldman Sachs? No, because all of their, and this is again something that is taken care of by the process of localization, and what you're pointing to in Europe is, is often challenging the sovereignty of the, the states of Europe in favor of the European Union control, and it's still fundamentally and Alex, you know, you understand the mechanisms of this, the way those, those people work is if it wasn't for the coercion of the government enforcement class what they're talking about wouldn't be possible and so when you can have... Oh no, like, we know wildcat economies grow at 10 to 15% a year. Globalist economies are basically negative, except in certain sectors. Look, I agree with a true laissez-faire, open, free society. The problem is, is that they always have a version of laissez-faire that are these big insiders who only want laissez-faire for them and nobody else. Right. And if there is part of this localization process that I'm describing that includes reclaiming property from corrupt corporations that have benefited unjustly from government and a state government at the point of secession decides, hey, there's a facility, there's a power plant, there's something, there's a, there's a, there's a you know, whatever it is that's in our state that was gained unjustly, it can be reclaimed by the state. And, 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 and then, and then the what people. finds that? The state courts? 
Yeah, like I said, it's not perfect, but it's a move in the right direction. Oh, no, no, to listen, now you're talking. They've shut down okay. 2,000 plus power plants the last five years that are totally clean so that the jobs can move to China where the globalists have their insider deals. That's on record. So yeah. we arrest the people that run the corporations that did that and lobbied for it. That's pure organized crime. And we turn those damn power plants on. See, now you're talking. Yeah, see, we take away all these mechanisms of control here, Alex, and the, the global. Hey, wait a minute. These guys ain't going to give up, buddy. They're going to be offshore with legions of hitmen. They're going to send in here to kill us. So I'm, I'm saying, how do we organize no, to no, stop no, no, them? No, this now, this is the important point here, Alex, because where they get their legions of hitmen now is through government. The, the private corporations... But they're going to they have... Hide, but they're going to be offshore bases. Any country that tries to go free, they will then attack from every angle. I'm saying we're not doing this in a vacuum. That's why the founders believed we had to have a limited government. Well, they also believed that the greatest threat to freedom was a standing army and that the greatest defense was a well-armed population that refused to be oppressed. I agree, I That's agree. That's what we're working towards. The reason the Japanese didn't invade the mainland was because they'd find a rifle behind every blade of grass. And what we're proposing is a population that refuses to be subjected to tyranny. And when you get to that point, you can't be invaded. Well, I know this. We're in the clutches of the globalists. Can you agree with me that we're not even talking about the federal government and that it is more popular to, 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 to say we have an occupied globalist government by Absolutely. banksters? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take the federal government as it exists away from them. Uh, absolutely. D did you read... Uh, I'm not bragging about it, but I did a lot of research into it. A lot of constitutional lawyers have read it. They said it's very constitutional, that it's a very smart plan that the founders would have come up with. Well, that's why, because I researched what they did. I mean, did you read what I put out last year, my call for a second American Revolution? I only saw uh, parts of it in the news. I apologize. No, 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 that's fine. I I'm just saying, I don't think, and I can't blame you because I'm not that articulate sometimes on the air. I think the plan you're talking about and my plan, which is just a constitutional plan, is very, very similar. I just want to have a debate about the fact that we've been occupied and captured like Vichy France, and that after we've kicked the globalists out, that I think the uproar that would come out of people discovering what happened, I think you might actually get what you're talking about. Uh, I, I think there's only a slight difference here, Alex, really, and I, and I think with this conversation has really gotten us honed in uh, on this minor tactical difference between what, what, what we are talking about and where you are saying, well, if we, if we do this and we, we create this mechanism still at the federal level, we can correct certain problems. And I agree. Your plan would have that advantage if, if you said we're going we're gonna to reclaim the federal government and we're going to use it for justice and we're going to do X, Y, and Z. The only disadvantage of that and the danger in that is then you are still relying on a great central authority that will and can be corrupted. So you're saying I shouldn't use the ring of Mordor. You're saying it, it, yes. it, it, it will I'm always go bad. What, I am saying what you are proposing should happen, except it should be done with ruthless localization pushing the power down, and all of the aims that you are looking for can be achieved at the state or more local levels. Well, you know, every time you're on, I see comments and stuff by kind of collectivists saying, well, what about all the federal money? They really don't get that that money's what local money. money. Yeah, it's all fiat, exactly. But, but, but that that's energy symbols, energy stolen from the states, expropriated to basically a globalist crime syndicate, and then they give us a little bit back with strings attached. Right. And, oh, it's disgusting that people don't get that. But you're right. It's collectivists who believe in the economic fallacies of, of, of a central government, of Keynesianism, essentially, that, you know, the government can create wealth out of thin air. And, you know, just today, I'm sure you covered the New York Police Department gas attack or, you know, three point four million dollars to study how gas moves through the subway system in New York. And the, what's offensive to me about that is not that it's used to, to scare the American people or to make you think, oh, you need government to protect you. Sure, it's a psyop. False threat. No, but it's, it's $3.4 million that if not spent by government would be spent by the people to meet real human needs. And well, to me, that's And then it's given to a firm that's a buddy of the insiders. You know, it's, it's, I mean, this whole complex. Well, look, it's clear. I see like twice the police I saw just 10 years ago driving home. Uh, the police literally act like many of them like they were just released from an insane asylum. Uh, now the police in Texas pull you over without a warrant and shove their hand up your butt. 
Well, uh, Alex, let, let me just, if I may suggest, going back to the, the distinction between what we're proposing, the, the specific advantage of what I'm talking about. Because when you say we're going to retake the federal government, you suggest then you need a national leader, you need some national management of this new government, you need everybody in the nation to somehow agree on a plan. What I'm suggesting of simply returning all of that authority immediately to the states has this great advantage of being able to unify people who are of vast different opinions. They don't have to wake up. They don't have to agree with us philosophically. They don't have to think about what we are proposing or what we believe in if they know that they are going to get better governance the closer it is to them at the state level where it better reflects the needs of their community. Yeah, well, let me expand on that. National level. Uh, look, look, in the plan I put forward that's just based on a lot of historical uh, research and, and things that others have put out, uh, great minds, I actually say nullification and that, and that states should secede to point out that it is not even a real federal government. So I just end that debate. And then if the states decide, because we're now the people of the states, we're deciding that we want to get rid of the federal government, then there is a plan developed to do that. But in the process, we've already withdrawn our consent and checkmated them. Well, let me ask Alex, if, if, if you saw that the 50 United States that we have today were completely independent, do you think there would be a possible political process for you to get 50 state governors to agree to the same thing, to come on board on the same plan? I think that's a much greater challenge, and it's very unrealistic. But we, it, it also suggests that, that we're going to get people back into this giant collective. But we did and it I in 1789. Uh, I mean, we didn't, listen, maybe we wouldn't do that. The whole point is, is the Declaration of Independence says it's our right, our duty, to abolish the forms we become accustomed to. 1789 was a step backwards from the Articles of Confederation. I agree with you. Local uh, autonomy. Listen, listen, hey, I'm trying to go with something that I believe people would actually... We're already occupied by the New World Order, and they're trying to mop up the free press and shut down whatever's left. And, and, and in a way, your radical plan is great because it moves the Overton window so far towards uh, liberty that then it makes my plan sound moderate. So in a way, we're kind of doing what the Marxists do, you know, where they say total communism, kill everybody, and then the socialist just goes, no, only collectivize 90%. You know, so, so I mean, regardless, it's a good discussion to have. Uh, it's just that it's like Ron Paul has said. So much of the public is so collectivized and so so sadly uh, demoralized. We don't have to challenge that even. All we have to convince them at this point is that the mechanism of the federal government is not in our best interest, and it would be pretty hard to argue against that now. Let me get off this subject for a moment. What do you see happening as all the NSA spying comes out and uh, as the government running al-Qaeda now comes out? I'm not trying to toot my horn. It's just that everything I've talked about from my just straight-up analysis of the situation and the experts I talked to has now been proven. Uh, oh, yes. You, you, I saw it coming, too. I, I'm sure your, your analysis goes way further back than mine, but I assumed since I was an activist in, in 2007 that, that everything was being recorded. And, and it's not hard. I mean, it's, it's not that hard to predict when you see the technology available that governments are going to abuse Exactly. It. So the government's in a technological buildup against us, knowing that, that collectivism and centralization always fails. They, they've said, they call it the final revolution, where they're going to amass such tyranny we never escape. I mean, you read this stuff by Bertrand Russell and people, they really are c crazy control freaks. My question is, how do you really see all this playing out and what do you expect to come out of uh, you know doing things like going down and uh, locking and loading in front of the Capitol? That's a great question Alex and it, it really does feel like we have the destiny of humanity in our hands right now not just you and I but all the people that are addressing these issues and are looking at this and it it does feel sometimes like it could go one of two directions either to, to freedom or fascism and I, and I have such great faith in humanity having seen how we have already progressed forward that although we seem to go two steps forward one step backwards and we're in the middle of a big step backwards right now I really believe we are on the verge of a major step forwards but it's going to take a lot more 
more and it's going to take a certain awakening but i believe that technology is fundamentally empowering and as much as it empowers government and as far ahead as they can get the distribution of that technology is also accelerating you i'm sure you've heard the analogy that uh, you know with cell phones that the technology that uh, or the, the the information capabilities that president clinton had when he left office in 2001 are are now surpassed by you know a bushman on on the in the desert with a, a smartphone in his hands and in that sense the technology is also distributed a lot faster you know it took you know decades before the printing press had a worldwide impact so i believe that technology is empowering and empowerment leads to liberty because it leads to the assertion of self ownership now just yesterday to answer your original question about the spine i went to the white house and and it was in between interviews i had in dc with uh, you know the the mainstream media ditto heads and I, I took some time out to do some man on the street interviews and i wanted to ask people how they felt about about being spied on and my, my brilliant girlfriend suggested that I, I ask people for their cell phones and so I went up to people and it started with hey what's your name where are you from what are you doing here and then can I have your cell phone I just put out my hand and I interviewed a, a, at least a, you know a dozen people and every single one of them one of them questioned as he was handing me his cell phone and I didn't answer I just ignored it and kept going every single one of them handed me their cell phone and I just started going through it oh you've got a text from so and so that sounds suspiciously terroristic I'm gonna have to put this in my pocket take it back to my studio and and, and download it for you you know and, and we'll get it back and you know it's for your own safety it's for, you know and and humanity really again the paradigm determines the the, the system of government and, and also there was one thing that Marx got very right which was that technology determines systems of social organization more than than any individual political will so I, I really believe that with or without us as individuals, humanity is evolving to this point. And when we get to this technological state where everybody has access to this technology, and remember, millions of people throughout America even don't have access to this technology, let alone know how to use it or apply it or to, to see the implications or to listen to great productions like the InfoWars Nightly News with it. But already, many people are waking up more than ever before because this technology allows people like you and I to do what sure. we're doing. Sure. Well, what I've found the biggest issue is people are either awake or they're getting deeper in a trance. Medically, the brain waves are lower. Uh, the TV heads, especially mainline TV viewers, are in a suspended disbelief. And that's why, like a magician can say, you take a bite of this uh, apple and it's really a potato, they taste an apple. The public is highly suggestible. And that's yes. how you or Mark Dice or my crew can go out and say, let's put all conservatives in FEMA camps for Obama. And if it's, However, yeah. historically, think about how less open to suggestion humans are because of the knowledge available. Think, think back just a, a few thousand years. You could tell people that the Earth was flat, despite evidence that they could see right in front of them of the horizon sure. disappearing. You could convince the most of the uh, most of the human population. Sure, Adam. What I'm getting at is that is that those people just took. The, you were confident. You said, "Give me your phone," and they did it. It's the same reason criminals come and say, "Give me your watch." Oh, the guy gave it to me, officer, and cops pull over and go, I'm going to search your car. I'm going to take a blood sample now. Yes, sir. I'm going to stick my hand inside your body. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm saying, what I'm seeing, Adam, is a breakaway. It's Either still not nearly as bad as what we had just 60 years ago with the world wars. And, and I'm even the wars now. The excuses are harder to get people to Or fight. they would tell black people, you got to sit at the back of the bus. Right. You can't convince people to enforce stuff like that anymore. And I think while you can say that the growth of government is continuing exponentially, largely because of technological reasons, industrialization, sure, sure. things like that, what you can convince people of is getting to be less and less. No, I agree with you. I'm not giving a negative view. I'm saying there's a dichotomy. There's, sure. a, there's a, a purification process. You're either getting more mindless, more unconscious, or more awake, more informed. I, even even then, you know, I understand what you're saying. I think that's part of a temporary step backwards as, as people get fluoridated and dumbed down and obese and things like that. But even the, the, the dumbest, most propagandized American in that state mm -hmm. can't be convinced that the world is flat. And, and I, I, I really believe that unless that was a universal thing, Alex, unless it was every last man, woman and child in that state, you know, they can still look to people who are free, who are happier. And I think this is so important about my message personally, that being enlightened uh, to these facts means you get to live better res as a result you know if, if being a libertarian means you're going to be miserable then you shouldn't be doing it or you're, oh, no, you're I doing totally it agree with you and, and I think it's essential that people that are awake 
not just watch my show or your show. They go out and be leaders themselves. That, Absolutely. That is the absolute essential here. Leaders it, by example, by living well. Let me go back to something here at the end. Are you noticing, though, that more either police, where the rubber meets the road in, in government and the people, collectivism and the individual, either they're waking up and withdrawing their consent quietly, because I'm running to a lot of cops that are awake now more than ever, or they're going more insane. And, and, and like I said earlier, now they're going to, without warrant, stick their hands in our bodies. I mean, this really shows the logical fallacy of government worship and how have they gotten so whacked out what's your take on those videos that are coming out oh man that is such a deep topic and a very important one because the relationship of the government with the enforcement class and the general population really does serve as an important indicator about the status of government and i think right now with the size of government they're able to significantly isolate people from the general population but i've thought about this ex extensively in military terms being a, a combat veteran myself the only way that you could get troops to go and fire on innocent Iraqis was to dehumanize them, to separate them. And similarly, the police have to have that kind of mentality in order to commit these atrocities that they commit in the streets of America every single day. And there is that dehumanization that takes place. Oh, you're just a citizen. Oh, you're just a subject, that kind of thing. But again, I see the long-term trend here. And while there is a step backwards in many ways with the police state as we have it today, because the court system, you know, Know, uh, protects corrupt cops, uh, encourages them to lie on the stand. We have the broader trend of connection uh, with, with people. We have the broader trend of police accountability. I think we're coming to a point where everybody's going to have, you know, if not Google Glass or some equivalent, they're going to have that in their contact lenses or embedded in their eyeballs, and it's going to upload their entire lives to the cloud. And while if it's government that's in charge of that, it's a very dangerous thing. But if it's the people that have that as a means of accountability, I think it's going to go a long way to, to accountability for sure, police officers. Sure. And if anything, I, I, I really do think, Alex, while we might see some individual incidents, I, I really believe we've hit the high watermark of what individual officers are capable of in America in terms of depravity. Well, and, and it's causing a massive debate. And the power structure should notice if Congress has a 10 percent approval rating, the mainstream media is hemorrhaging to death. Obama's poll numbers with his trendy under 30s uh, is, is hemorrhaging. Uh, you can see the trend of history towards liberty. I agree. Yes. I'm stating the big battle is joined. All forces need to be on the field, not in the bleachers. This is historic, uh, what is happening right now, and it's an incredible, incredible time to, to be alive. And uh, I appreciate uh, Adam Kokesh. I appreciate you joining us tonight, and I look forward to speaking to you in the future. And I tell you, what people can say whatever they want about you. That's bold to go into Mordor and load that shotgun and do all that. And I guess you haven't gotten any word uh, yet from the forces of Mordor about uh, your daring as a slave uh, to bring a, a weapon into their, uh, their, their spider hole? I think they're afraid to give me any more publicity at this point, Alex, but I really appreciate the conversation. I think this is a very important one, but I hope when it comes down to it, you'll be in D.C. next Independence Day, again, with or without me. This is going to happen the same march, the same single call, and if it's the only step in my plan, it's still the first step in your plan to abolish the federal government, to have the state secede, reclaim federally held property, and start moving towards justice and eventual self-governance. Oh, I do think the western states should seize all federal property. Some States they've Let's got like it. like 90 percent, and, and the federal government doesn't even exist anymore. So on that we agree. Let's kick the district of criminals back to Europe where it came from, back to the new world order. Let's kick that hive of scum out of here. Let's kick the private federal reserve out. Let's go after. You want to abolish the private federal reserve, right? Absolutely. Yeah, because I mean I'm focusing on that. That's the real. That's the real amoeba that's entered the political brain uh, that is the main force behind it. And after they're gone, listen, I'm happy to get rid of all of it. because well, Most Americans have no idea how extensive the influence of the Fed is. But if they go, well, our money comes from the federal government, well, now we can have money come from state governments. And that's as much as they think about it. We can use that. We can work with that. We can get that consent. We can get that consensus from the American public. Oh, I agree with all the technology we we've need got. Your support. We should be working literally. Two, I've had top engineers on, like Dr. Bob Bowman, former head of Star Wars. We should be working five hours a week, living like kings. I mean, we'd oh, yeah. already be on Mars if oh, it wasn't yeah. for government standing in the way. I mean, it, it, it's incredible. Adam Kokesh, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. All right, folks. 
Uh, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Great job to the crew. Great job. Uh, to you, the supporters and viewers of InfoWars Nightly News. If you have a PrisonPlanet.tv membership, they're $5.95 a month, that is 11 people that can use that simultaneously with the username passcode. If you are a PrisonPlanet.tv member, today, share it with your friends and family. Ask friends and family, are they using it? Tell them to go watch the films in high def that are there. The, the expanded extras, we're going to premiere next week. Uh, the uh, documentary State of Mind, all of it. Operation Awaking the Sleeping Giant, use those PrisonPlanet.tv memberships. I mean, look at my crew. Look at the incredible still image they had of me in that first, uh, that first uh, tile. The comedy level of what my crew does, that right there, uh, is just, just, just off the charts awesome. So again, gold star for that one. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom line, become a PrisonPlanet.tv member today. I want to thank all of you that are members, but if you're watching this on YouTube later, a lot of money was, was, was donated by people uh, voting with their dollars to be PrisonPlanet.tv members over the years to buy books, t-shirts, films, you name it. Become a member. Support us. We're working our butts off 18 hours a day. I know I am most days to bring you this information. Go to PrisonPlanet.tv. Become a member. It takes one minute to sign up. Get the July issue with the 10 bumper stickers in it to wake people up in your area. America has been occupied by globalist forces. Uh, you know, uh, bumper stickers like that. Take action. Uh, buy the Pro Pure best filters out there, 10% off promo code WATER. Go to InfoWarsStore.com. Vote with your dollars. We're not the criminal globalist and the federal government that come with a gun to your head taking your money. If you believe in what we're doing and want to help us get the word out, you know we're working the hardest of anybody out there. Donate, support, buy the products, InfoWarsStore.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And then we're a platform to support all these other patriots and liberty lovers, whether they be real liberal progressives that mean well, that uh, don't like the corporate tyranny, or whether they be super anarchists like uh, you know, Kokesh. We're here to have a real debate, a real discussion. Me, I'm a constitutionalist that knows America was the best system ever and that our founders were geniuses. And I want that system back. And, and then if we get that, then we can have a free platform to even get rid of that. But you're not going to do that until you kick the New World Order out. That's not going to happen until you've done that. So, again, that's it for this extended uh, edition. Great job to Paul Watson doing the news segment. And, again, if you're not a PrisonPlanet.tv member, become one today. If you are not sharing your membership with friends and family, do it. Put it in an email. Say, here's your free membership to PrisonPlanet.tv. Go check out these films now. And that's how we're going to reach more people. It is so easy. Print up your username and passcode on a cards. Give it to friends and family. And then if 11 people start tuning in at once and you can't log on, go, thank God. Wow, I've got 11 people watching the show. And go get another 595 membership. Keep it for yourself or share it as well. It's incredible what you can do by you taking action. The individual is king when the individual stands up. Alex Jones signing off for another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.